Hey everybody, it's Allie from Padfoot Palms Poodles and Pals. I've got a ton of information in this video, so please make sure you watch it until the end. Um, I'm going to go over behavioral changes, um, how to care for your female while she's in heat. I'm going to talk about UTIs. I'm going to talk about, um, you know, the care instructions for reusable um, diapers, dog diapers. I'm going to talk about everything you can possibly think of when it comes to your female dog in heat. This video is gonna be a little bit longer, but I promise you there's a lot of really great information. So let's just get right into it. We are here in the laundry room. And so we are going to take our um, absorbable washable pads off. And I am also going to be washing um, the part that they attach to, right, right here. And we're gonna go ahead and throw them in. Here is a belly band. We're gonna put that in too. And make sure you take notice, I am attaching the Velcro on all of the pieces individually so that we don't end up with a whole chain of items that are all Velcroed together. Okay, now that we have our detergent in there, we've got our Oxy in there, we are going to wash on cold. Um, more water than you need for the load and we're gonna do an extra wash cycle okay and as you can see here um, everything came out nice and white and clean so we are good to go I'm gonna take these and flip them inside out and put them in the dryer now because both of these pieces have snaps. You want to make sure that you turn your dryer to low because you don't want to melt your snaps. Um, you can also hang these to dry, which takes a little bit longer, but um, it'll make them last longer. So now we're going to throw them in. Well, Velocity, are you comfortable in the shower? You just, you just hanging out? Okay, you just, just gonna take a nap there? Okay, if that's what makes you happy. Good girl. Is Kennedy coming to check on her? She's okay. She's very concerned. Okay, another thing that you want to keep in mind is when it's time to change the wrap either for your boy, if you've got um, a wrap for your male, which I'm about to put on him, or if you've got a wrap for your female, please disregard the boxes, we're still unpacking. Um, one of the things that you wanna remember is you don't wanna make it an uncomfortable experience for them, right? I mean, putting on a big puffy diaper is not a dog's idea of fun. So make sure that you make it a positive experience. Don't chase them down, have them come to you. Lots of treats, right? Put it on, more treats. Really make it a positive experience for them because it's gonna make all the difference in the world. If you start out with your female's first heat cycle and you make it so that she starts associating this diaper with a negative experience, then you are gonna have a hell of a time, you know, every time she goes into heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on her because I've only got just me here. Suze is out shopping with her mom. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this put on and then we're gonna give everybody some treats. room. Probably help if we had some light. 
Now, I'm gonna give Velocity a treat. And we'll give everybody a treat. Here we go. Okay, so we've got the wrap on Shazam and the diaper on Velocity. Please, 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 if you take anything away from this video, understand that that is not enough to prevent a litter of puppies. <laughs> I know, Sega, I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's getting all tangled up in here. It's because I've still got some unpacking to do. So I'm gonna work on this unpacking and then we'll go over some more tips. Okay, we've come to the point in our video where we talk about the diapers. Dun, dun, dun. And I've got a bunch to talk about. So I'm gonna try to go through everything very quickly while also being thorough. So first up um, is one that I wish that I had known about before purchasing all of the others. So this is by Pooch Care and I'll just put this up on the screen for you so you can find it. Um, I ordered these off of Amazon and I'm gonna put all of the links in the description below. So this is just like all of the other uh, covers or reusable diapers or panties, whatever you wanna call them for your female dog. The difference is these have these snaps on the back and what it allows you to do is tighten them up just a few inches in the back. And I know that this doesn't really show you anything, me just holding it up. But what it does is it makes everything tighter, which is great if you have a male around and you're trying to keep him from getting to your female. Now, let me preface this by saying that in no way shape or form is this going to keep your male from getting to your female okay even if he has a wrap on she has a diaper i i'm sure i've probably said it before somewhere else in this video it's not enough right you got to keep everybody separated where there's a will there's a way and just like uh that guy said in jurassic park you know nature always finds a way so that snapping feature very very nice they also come in lots of really cute colors right obviously i got this because i love tie-dye i mean who doesn't but really super cute um i like that the pooch care comes with a card shows you how to do the snaps they also have mail wraps and they tell you all about washing how to keep them clean i go over that in another part of this video because it's really just not that hard to do we've got v comfy just, I'm assuming that's how you say it. Um, they come very nicely packaged. I wanted you guys to see the packaging on this one. So I waited to open it. If I can get it open now. There we go. Again, they come in very cute prints. Like look, this one has little doggies all over it. And look, that's even a poodle. Excellent. Okay, we got a little forest theme. What do we got here? Look fishies right Susan will love that she loves to fish llamas can't go wrong with some drama llamas right so the reason why I purchased these is because they are in cute prints and if you have multiple females that are different sizes and you need to be able to differentiate the sizes I highly recommend that you buy solid colors in one size and then all your cute prints right in the other size because when you're washing everything and putting it away oh my gosh it makes life so much easier so initially what I did was I had a whole bunch of these right they were all solid colors and then I had the two sizes so what I did is I got a permanent marker and I marked this in L because this is the large. And then the other solid colors, we'll just pretend, um, have an M for medium, because some of my girls will fit a large and some of them are not. 
big enough. So then I had the brilliant idea way after the fact to just get mediums in the cute prints and then have the larges be the solid colors it makes life so much easier. So please learn from my mistake and do it that way from the start. Okay, now the other one that I wanted to show you, these are super cute. These are Joy Share. Again, I got all of these on Amazon. Um, if you go with different brands, make sure that you check the measurements for each brand and the dogs are out there playing now so now they're gonna start barking make sure you check the measurements okay you cannot assume that a medium look how cute these are you guys oh my gosh shut up adorable um you cannot assume that a medium in one brand is going to be the same measurements as a medium in the other um for example in the Timoy brand, which is this one, um, which is my second favorite, they actually have two sizes for large. There's an L1 and an L2, and it provides for a, a wider range of dogs that they can fit. So very, very important that you take your dog's measurements and you get the right size. And if you get excited about some cute prints, like I did, make sure that you're checking that measurement every single time no matter where you're purchasing from so that you're getting the right size next up we're going to talk about care instructions and i know in another part of the video you'll see me kind of go through um, the motions of washing a set that have been used but i want to talk to you guys especially you ladies about how to keep these looking new and the reason why mine are all pearly, white, and gorgeous is because I actually used to own a reusable menstrual pad company, TMI. And um, so I learned quite a few years ago about how to keep things looking white and fresh and new. And that's one of the things that really scares people both about reusable menstrual pads and also about things like this is they're afraid that they're not going to come clean. They're afraid that they're going to look yucky. And let me just tell you that you would much rather this look yucky than to get blood on your furniture, right? I mean, it's just, it's one of those things. If you're going to have a dog that's intact for a week, you're gonna have to deal with a little bit of blood. It's not that big of a deal. People make it out to be, oh my God, it's the end of the world. It's not, get some of these. Anyway, this has been washed a gazillion times. As you can see, it's perfectly white. And that is because what I do is all throughout the day, as I am changing the diaper, um, I am putting them into the washing machine in a, half full washing machine that has one scoop of OxyClean in it. And I make sure that I mix the OxyClean around in the water, right? You could get like a wooden spoon or something and kind of stir it around just to make sure it's good and dissolved. And what I do is I take these, once they're dirty of course, flip them inside out so the inside is exposed and then press them down into the water so they are essentially sitting there soaking for hours and hours during the day set them to wash overnight now they've been soaking all day i get the last one in for the day and now they're they're washing overnight the next morning i come in i get all of the clean ones that are now wet i put them in the dryer on a low setting so that you don't um, melt off your snaps if you have the kind that has the little snaps. Um, make sure your Velcro is attached just like this is, otherwise uh, you will find that they will all be stuck together. It's a hot mess. Um, it'll pick up all the fuzz and everything. So you put them in the dryer, dry them on low, and go ahead and refill your washing machine 
to then do it all again, right? You get the one that's been soiled, you throw it in the washing machine, it's soaking all day, and you do it again. And it's a very easy system. Um, I even had, I had a very old, very, very old, almost as old as I am, um, washer and dryer that went kaput on me in the middle of Kennedy's heat cycle, which came right after Velocity's heat cycle. So um, in that instance, what you can do is you can soak them in the tub and uh, wash them very thoroughly by hand. And then you can hang them on the bar, right? You just right undo your Velcro, put it over your shower bar, and then they just kind of hang like this. And then you can uh, allow them to air dry overnight. And they'll actually keep longer this way if you air dry them. I don't have time for that, right? We're busy, we have lives, we have things to do. I need them to get dry, let's go, let's go. If I could make another recommendation for you, it would be to go ahead and buy a week's worth. They usually come in sets of three or four. Um, as you can see, this little set here came in a set of four. And usually on Amazon, if you search through there, you can find some pretty good prices. So I am going to include links down below, but I don't want you to think that that's the end all be all you have to purchase from that link. I really want you to take the time to hunt around and find the prints that you like. Oh goodness, if I could get a hold of this one. With the llamas. Um, find the prints that you like or the solids, whatever the case may be, and then um, purchase a week's worth. And it depends on if you're going to be home all day, if you're not going to be home, your dog's going to be put up. Just try to factor in that you're going to be changing them out every two to three hours. Now, when it comes to going potty, you t obviously want to take these off to let your dog go outside and go potty. Um, when you have a house full of dogs, sometimes that doesn't happen. And sometimes, right, they get stuff on it. You just take it off, put it in the washing machine to soak, and then you want to take a pet wipe or um, a lukewarm washcloth with maybe some um, waterless shampoo, and you want to clean your dog's area right? Their sanitary area, S sanitary area. I'm thinking sanitary cut, right? They're, they're behind. You want to clean everything up so that they're clean. Um, if you can give them a break for a little bit, uh, then definitely do that. If that's not feasible, if you have a male in the house and that's not going to happen until later on in the evening, um, when you're putting everybody to bed, then that's fine. You can go ahead and put on the next wrap. So, that's where we are with that. Now, one of the other contraptions, Shazam! One of the other contraptions that I wanted to tell you about is something that Sue's created. And I gotta tell you, she's a genius. So we call it the skirt. Basically what it is, and I'm gonna insert a picture so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but basically what it is, is here's your dog, here's their tail, and you take a reusable or washable whelping pad and put it over the female, right, along her back. Then you put a male wrap right here. Then fold this back over and it creates this little draping skirt. I'm, I'm gonna insert the pictures now. Um, and what it does is it keeps your male from being able to get to your female. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but if you are a household of multiple people and you need to get something done, you can absolutely um, use this method, the skirt that Sue's created, and um, it'll give you kind of that peace of mind while you're getting something done. I don't recommend you leave them in it for a long period of time. Like I said, they need to be under supervision. But for example, I would put it on either Velocity or Kennedy when they were in heat and I needed to do the dishes, right? 
for those of you who know, if you have a male and you have females who are in heat, if you try to put him up, he is going to scream bloody murder, right? And all your neighbors are going to come over and be like, what are you doing to that dog? Nothing. He's just being dramatic. Um, they like to have the female at least in their eyesight. So this gives you the option of, okay, he can still see her. He's not freaking out. And I can turn around and just kind of keep an eye on them while I'm getting something else done. Again, it is not meant to give you free reign to go do whatever for two hours right, and leave them together unsupervised because he will find a way around it, especially if he's a poodle. So just keep that in mind. Um, but it is another layer of protection. Let's talk about some of the misconceptions when it comes to a female in heat. Um, are you going to be able to take your female to a dog park? No. I don't advise that you take your dog to a dog park anyway, but that's a separate video. Um, are you going to take her out to PetSmart? Are you going to take her, you know, over to a friend's house? Are you going to take her to doggy daycare? No, you're not going to do any of those things. Um, really, it's just during that first kind of 15 day time period from the start of her bleeding until, a, you know, a few days after it stops. Shazam! He's getting crazy. So um, you just want to keep that in mind. Is it the end of the world? No. I, I don't know why everybody makes it out to be the end of the world. Are you going to be taking her for walks? No. Don't take her for a walk. I mean, you could certainly, if you walk your dog to have them go potty, then yes, you'll do that, but you'll want to do that close to home, right? You're not going to want to take her on long walks. Don't go on a hike. Don't go, because you never know. Oh, hi. Kennedy, can I, hi, hi, can I help you? Did you, hi, hello, hi, I love you. Sorry, it was Kennedy making a, a random appearance. Um, completely forgot what I was saying. Okay, so don't take your dog anywhere when she's in heat, right? It, it's just the safe and smart thing to do. Even if you're normally like a morning jog type of person and you take your dog, just don't, just don't because it doesn't matter where you live, where you are, right? If you are out somewhere, there is the potential that a loose dog could come running up because they will be able to smell her from a mile away. Um, can you leave her outside in the yard unattended? No. If you have a fenced in yard, an invisible yard, I don't care if you have a nine foot privacy fence, no. Every time you take her outside, you need to stand there while she does her business and then bring her back in. Um, I, you know, I talk about in part of this video where I was just letting the dogs out like I normally do and some random dog was right beside the fence. So you, you just have to be careful. And like I said, nature finds a way. So. I've had some people ask, you know, how do you know the difference between your female going into heat and a UTI? And a UTI, there's gonna be a lot of frequent urination. Um, if there's blood in the urine, that's a big problem. You need to take them to the vet immediately. Um, if your female is acting fine, right? She's not having frequent urination, but she does have some blood, then it's likely that she has gone into heat. And if you're concerned that it may be something else, then I absolutely encourage you to take your dog to the vet, right? Because they can do a progesterone test and tell if she's in heat or not. Um, you don't wanna mess around when it comes to a UTI because um, for those of you who have never had one before, it is extremely painful. Please don't make your dog go through that. Just take them to the vet. So generally speaking, with a heat cycle, you're going to see a lot of swelling. Um, you'll see just a little bit of blood at first, and then it will, you know, gradually, there'll be a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, also, if you have a male dog, even if they are neutered, they're going to show her a lot of interest. 
and I've had a lot of people ask me if you have a neutered male in your home for example we have um, Bear who's our rescue Pomeranian um, you know are they going to be interested in her are they going to try to mount her the answer is it really depends on the dog he is old enough that he isn't interested and doesn't care um, but could they yes and they could even tie together right um, if that happens don't panic it can last anywhere from five minutes to you know 30 minutes it really just depends on the dog do not try to separate them just offer support especially to your female because the male is just going to turn into jelly and like let his weight go and she has to hold him up and it can be annoying um, comfort your female right sometimes they panic when that happens so hey guys whoa woke the dragon uh if you are planning on having your female go through a heat cycle or two and then opting for a traditional spay please keep in mind that most vets let me take that back most ethical vets will not do a traditional spay right after a heat cycle. You're gonna have to wait a month or two um, because the uterus does swell quite a bit and you, you need time to kind of, you know, have those hormones subside. Um, from what my vet explained to me, it increases the risk, you know, that there would be an internal bleed or something like that because of, you know, all of the uh, swelling in the area. So just keep that in mind if you've got a female that's going through her heat cycle and you're like, okay, now I'm gonna make the appointment for her to do a traditional spay, then you wanna A, make sure your vet is aware, tell them the date that she went into heat, and also you wanna push that date out just like two or three months, right? So that you can accommodate for that swelling. Another question that I get, um, is people want to know, okay, is my female going to have this huge behavior change after she's gone through a heat cycle? Um, that is challenging to answer because, again, it depends on the dog. But if you have a dog who is of sound temperament, meaning that they don't have any behavior problems, they don't have any kind of serious aggression issues, right? You will find that they have a tendency to calm down after a heat cycle. It's kind of like, you know, when dogs kind of reach that six to eight month mark and all of a sudden they stop listening to you and they're pushing all the boundaries, right? We call that like the teenage phase having the heat cycle usually comes right after that and you find that that's when they kind of hit their 20s or 30s right they they mellow out a little bit they're still very young especially after our first heat cycle so they still play they still act like puppies but they they kind of mellow out a little bit and it calms them down and this is one of the reasons why it frustrates me when vets say, oh yeah, oh, your your dog is having aggression? Oh, get him spayed, get him neutered. N no, no, as a matter of fact, that can even make it worse. So, but again, that's another video. It It's frustrating. So my experience with my females has always been, um, they become sweeter, they become more calm, they become better listeners, right? Because they kind of come out of that teenage phase. They are sweeter to other members of the pack if you have multiple. For example, we got uh, Remedy and shortly thereafter, Kennedy went into heat and Kennedy decided that Remedy was her baby and she would lay with her, she would watch her, she would make sure the other dogs weren't getting close to her while she was eating, she would protect her, she would clean her, you know, constantly cleaning her ears. I had to get her to stop doing that. She, But she was trying to be a good mom, even though Remedy wasn't her puppy, right? Because she was having all of those hormones. So 
sometimes you may find that your all of those maternal type instincts really start to come out. So your dog may, um, you know, lick you more or want to protect you or be close to you, but they're, you know, it's, it may or may not be part of a personality change per se. It's just kind of the phase that they're going through. You have to wait until they get out of the heat cycle to see again, how they're going to mellow out answered some of your questions that you may have about your female going into heat. Um, you know, hopefully you were able to get some tips and tricks to help you out. Um, I'm going to put all of the Amazon links down below. Again, please make sure that you are taking the appropriate measurements of your dog and it will tell you in the Amazon ad. Um, so that you can get the right size. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to add that I forgot to mention earlier is you can get used reusable pads. You can find them on like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, places like that. You can get those, run them through a sanitized cycle, right? With some of the sanitizer, the Clorox sanitizer. Um, and you can use those as well. And that can be a great way to save money. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now because otherwise this video will just go on forever and I will just talk to you guys forever because that's what I do. Okay, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, if it was helpful at all, please give me a thumbs up. If not, and you hated it, then please give me a thumbs down. That's okay too, just make sure you do something. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing and join our Facebook group because we have a phenomenal group of people. It's a positive community. And if you have more questions about your female going into heat, um, you can always come and ask them there. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.